else hope you're doing well thank you so much for stopping by today's video today I wanted to showcase some of the plants that I've had in my collection for a very long time I've pretty much had them from the very beginning of my plant journey but for whatever reason I don't really share them on my Instagram or talk about them much on my YouTube channel either so it's about time I rectified that because these poor plants have been overlooked for long enough they have been super forgiving with me and they've continued to grow steadily with very little maintenance. I think these plants are really good to consider if you guys are looking for easy care plants that don't require high maintenance at all. So if you're interested to see what they are, then definitely keep on watching. Some of you guys were asking when I started on my plant journey and it was actually back in December 2018 when I first moved to Sydney from Melbourne. But I didn't really get into the whole houseplant craze until about mid-2019 because I wanted to make sure that I could take care of some of the plants that I own before I go full force into collecting houseplants. So that's what happened. And most of these houseplants that I'll be talking about today, I did acquire in mid-2018, so around about July or August. Did I say 2018? I meant 2019. So yeah, most of these plants I purchased back in July or August of 2019. So that's around about three years now and I wanted to share with you guys how far they've come and what they're currently looking like. Before we get started, if you're new around here, my name is Grace and I post plant videos every week. So if you're interested in planty content like this, feel free to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you get notified when next week's video is out. Just quickly before we get into the oldest plants, I wanted to give you guys an update on this Maranta No ID that I shared a couple of videos ago. I think it only had like two leaves back then, but it just put out this beautiful new leaf right here. And that's also quite significantly larger than the other leaves so I'm really excited about that and I had to share it with you guys. So first plant on this list is the Pilea peperomioides. This is a super popular plant back in 2018 to 2019. I believe this is the plant that kind of sparked the whole interest in houseplant parenting or houseplant collecting back then. This is sort of like the OG plant to have back then and yeah, it goes by many names. So this is also called the Chinese money plant or the friendship plant because it puts out pups that can be very easily propagated and shared amongst your friends, which I have done. I've actually taken so many pups or propagations off of this mother plant and just given it to my friends or also have it um, propagating somewhere. My partner Alex actually purchased this plant on succulentaustraliasales.com, I believe. And initially we thought this was a succulent plant because that's where we got it from, but um, that could not be further from the truth. This is not a succulent plant. So at the very beginning, we actually planted this in cacti soil in a terracotta pot and we basically treated it like a succulent. So, you know, it was severely underwatered for a very long time, uh, but eventually we got the care requirements right. I potted it up in a plastic nursery pot and changed up the potting mix as well. Anyway, I'll insert some photos of what this looked like when we first got it back in July 2019 but fast forward to today this is how far it's come in terms of the number of leaves it might not look like much because it does sort of you know yellow and fall out but if you look at the length or height of this stem you can really see how far it's come from back in the day but in terms of care as you can see it's very forgiving even though it was mistreated for quite a long time in our care but you know it's bounced back and it's looking really good now so as long as you get the potting mix right and the watering right this plant is a really good one to just set and forget next we have these two Haworthias that we actually got in the same shipment as the Pilea Pep. So yeah, I've had this for around about the same time, so for three years, and I'll insert some photos of what these look like when I first got it. It was a tiny little thing, but you can see how much it's filled out now, and I've kept it in the same pot so you can really see the size difference and how much it's grown in the three years. These are both Haworthia Cooperize. Uh, I don't know how you say it, but um, that's how I would pronounce it. But they're 
different hybrids of that. So you can see there's some slight differences in the foliage of this one, which is a bit more rounded and shinier, as opposed to this one here that is a little bit pointier and has little spines poking out, which makes it a little bit fuzzy. I'm not sure if that's going to show up on camera, but yeah, you can see a little bit of fuzz poking out the sides of the leaves. And these two are currently flowering at the moment. They are very easy to flower. They generally send out these flower spikes at the turn of a season. I'm not at the stage yet where I'm comfortable with pollinating them. I really don't know much about that. But if any of you have pollinated these before or have any idea how to do it, please do leave some tips for me in the comments below. This is another genus of plants that really got me into the whole house plant collecting journey. So as you can see, it's got these like really shiny, translucent parts of the, the foliage, which helps light reach through to the chlorophyll and helps them photosynthesize a little better. But I just really like the look of these windows. They just look so juicy and shiny like jelly to me. And I love jelly, so I absolutely love the look of this. I actually have a total of eight different Hawartheas in my collection. I'm just showing you two at the moment, but if you guys are interested to see what they are, definitely let me know in the comments below and I can film a Hawartheia collection for you guys. If you guys are enjoying this video so far, please do me a favor and hit that like button. It really helps out my channel. And while you're at it, leave me a comment down below to let me know which are some of the oldest plants in your collection. Next on the list is this umbrella plant or the Schifflera something or other. I'll put the name on screen. Uh, I often forget that I even have this plant. I don't really showcase it very much on Instagram or talk about it ever. I don't know why I've overlooked this for so long. I mean, the leaf shape is quite unique and interesting. It looks like little starbursts. It's such a fuss-free plant and it's actually grown so much from when I first got it. I believe I got it around about August or September 2019 and I'll insert a photo right here of what that looked like but yeah fast forward three years it has bushed out so much it's grown super tall honestly I don't do very much with this plant it's not fussy when it comes to temperature or humidity or lighting I only ever like water it once a week or something like that that's all I ever do with this plant and it's continued to grow for me so definitely one that I would highly recommend if you're after easy care plants next up is this guy right here. This is the Maranta Lucanura that you usually see in the background of my videos. It sits right there, so it's looking pretty empty now. I got this plant round about September 2019, I believe, and it might not look like it's grown too much in three years, but I've actually restarted this plant once before. It grew out really bushy for me, and I'll insert some photos of the progress. But what happened was it started to put out smaller and smaller leaves. So I actually chopped it all the way back and tried to propagate those leaves. Unfortunately, it didn't really propagate successfully in water. So I don't really have those cuttings anymore to plant back into the mother plant. But thankfully, it's actually shot out new growth. If you can tell, it kind of does this thing where it shoots out like an entirely new growth. Um, and you can sort of restart the plant every now and then if you don't really like the look of it anymore. So with these prairie plants, I believe they grow from like bulbs or corms. I believe it's bulbs. So what that means is that you can actually restart these plants as long as you don't throw the bulbs away. You can actually chop them all the way back and grow them again afresh. So if you're looking for a compact plant that you can chop or restart or refresh every now and then, this is the one for you. But anyway, regardless, it grew back and it's now bushier than ever with more new growth. So I'm pretty happy with that. In terms of care, however, these guys are pretty similar to the Calathea. So they're not exactly the easiest to care for. They do require high humidity, especially if you want to preserve the large leaves. And they also can be quite finicky when it comes to the type of water that you use. So I water mine with filtered water and I make sure to keep it well hydrated. Otherwise, it does get crispy tips, which I just chop off. I don't know if you can tell, but all of these guys actually have a little bit of crispy tips that I just 
snip off to um, make it look better. Last thing to note about this plant is that it is also nictinastic, which means that it does move up and down depending on the light. So in daytime, it's you know showing its foliage, but in nighttime, it actually closes up. So I just think that that's really interesting to look at, and it makes this plant just a little bit more unique. Next one on the list is my Philodendron Florida. Now this isn't the variegated variety, so it's not the Florida Ghost or the Florida Beauty. This is the regular green form of the Philodendron Florida. I got this around about September 2019, I want to say. When I first got this, it was literally just a handful of leaves down here, and I'll insert some photos um, for reference, and fast forward three years, it's grown super tall and it's given me all these beautiful leaves. I have this growing up on a stake and that's been doing well enough because it's put out all these crazy aerial roots. I'm not sure if the camera is focusing but it's got all these crazy aerial roots from um, my grow tent because of the humidity in there. So I don't really think that it needs a moss pole per se. I think it's growing fine. This one's actually grown a ton. And mind you, I've also chopped and propped and sold some of the cuttings off of this one. So this is definitely one that is a giver. I just love the shape of the leaf. It has these really interesting shaped lobes which make it look very different from a lot of the other plants out there. I believe there are similar looking philodendrons in the market but personally I'm a fan of this particular one. So much so that I have this green variety, the Florida Ghost as well as the Florida Beauty. I know that the variegated counterparts like the Florida Ghost and Florida Beauty look a lot more interesting but if you don't want to have to worry about the variegation or you know maintaining the plants, I'd highly recommend this one. So that's it for today's video guys, I hope you enjoyed. If you want to see more, feel free to check out these videos right here. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, stay mellow my fellows.